Hello, friends. Welcome, replay viewers. Hopping on here this Wednesday afternoon to share with you a little bit about what we've been doing in our family for whole group math recently. See if some folks jump in. Hello. There are some people. Hi, people. So nice to see you. All right, let me flip around the camera and introduce myself. Hello. Hi, Jenna. I saw you on Mary's Scope the other day. If you are new here and your name isn't really obvious from your handle, definitely pop up your real name, which I will promptly forget because I'm really bad about that. But it's nice to at least know it at some point in the scope. Amber. No rhyme or reason. Is Rhymer your last name? That's a pretty cool handle. Hi, Amber. Let me introduce myself. My name is Lena Sutherland. Aunt Belinda. Hi, Belinda. Lena Sutherland, homeschool mom to seven. Five of them are school age right now. Hi, Angela from California. Mary is fantastic. I've known Mary since we were kiddos, but um, like her even better now as a homeschool mom. So it's really fun. I blog online. You can find me at homeschoolingwithouttrainingwheels.com, H-S-W-O, trainingwheels.com. I'm going to talk a little bit about um, how we do math, whole group as a family, and hopefully eventually I'll get a post up about this. So if you want links to resources and things like that, you can find them. But if you look back through my Periscope um, account or if you check my YouTube channel, you can find a scope that I did about how we use Khan Academy. And we use Khan Academy for our math practice. So the kids do their independent practice on Khan Academy, but we do the math instruction whole group. And, um, okay, so our kids right now, the, the ones who are school-aged are um, 11, 10, 8, 6, and then the 5-year-old. And I don't do a lot of formal instruction with the 5-year-old at this point. And honestly, with the 6-year-old, I'd be more flexible, um, but she wants to do everything that everybody else is doing, and sometimes so does the 5-year-old. So generally, the ones who are included in our family math are um, 11, 10, 8, and 6, and then the other two are, you know, hanging around. So um, the other thing that's a little bit interesting about our schedule, and I'm also working on a post about scheduling and keeping a schedule simple when you have a big family and a variety of age ages, and especially toddlers, um, is that we really are only learning one thing at a time. So... I'm not really teaching any history or science or um, actually really any language at the moment. Um, I'm going to be wrapping in an arrow guide next week. But um, right now we're really just learning as a family one thing, and that's measurement, which is kind of mathy, science-y, all wrapped into one. Um, so we, in the morning, we have a little Bible time together, and then either in the morning or afternoon we have about an hour for learning. And we just do one thing during that learning time. And right now it's measurement. That's what we're working on right now. Hey, I'm so glad you're here. Welcome, welcome. So um, I wanted to share with you just a little bit of what we've done as a part of measurement. And we're doing it really slowly and just exploring. And we'll probably spend a good six weeks or so just on measurement. 20 months to 13 years. Math together. Yeah, it got it just got too much. Um, you know, to have four or five people, um, when we went from three to four, I think that was like the straw that broke the camel's back. Four different workbooks, four different pages for mommy to check, return to the kids, they have to make corrections, I have to check it again. Four different, you know, things for me to explain ahead of time in the morning, it just was driving me crazy. Um, so, lots of work, right. So, this is what we've been doing, measurement. Okay, so the first thing that I did was, we did kind of an intro to the idea of measurement. I put up a big piece of paper on the wall, kind of like those post-it note pads that are, you know, really big, like chart paper. Put one of those up on the wall, and we just talked about what are all the different kinds of measurements. So we divided our paper up into, um, you know, time and length and weight and things like that. Yeah, math is just, the thing with math is that mommy is always the bottleneck, right? There's just not enough mommy to go around to do separate math for everybody, especially the more kids you have that, you know, are doing um, more serious math. So, like I said, they're doing their practice on Khan, so Khan is checking their work. And then the instruction and the discussion we're doing whole group is working great. So we started out with an intro to measurement, <clears throat> different kinds of measurement. We talked about the different kinds of units 
you know, what kinds of units do you use to measure length? What kinds of units do you use to measure weight, et cetera, et cetera? They're already a little bit familiar with metric and standard. Uh, so we talked some about that. And so the two books we use to introduce measurement are, this one is called Measuring Penny. And these are all library books. Got them all at my library. Some of these I actually own, but um, sometimes it's easier. I know this sounds crazy, but to pick up the library books anyway, just in case I can't find my copy at home. Um, and this is a cute little book where her teacher gives her an assignment to measure something. And so she goes home and she measures everything she can think to measure about her dog. And so it covers every type of measurement, length, weight, um, you know, volume, time, everything that you might measure, and then all the units. And it also goes through non-standard units. So, for example, here she's measuring length, and she's measuring the length of the dog's tails in dog bones. Um, have an additional copy for the older ones to read along. That is brilliant. I had not thought of that. So, okay, I'm adding one more idea to my tool belt. So I've really loved that book. There's another book by the same author about mapping Penny's world. So if you want to do geography and map skills, there's another map one. And then another one that we use is called, um, I love that idea. I have let the older kids have a copy to follow along. That's great. That's what we do when we read the Bible, but it hadn't occurred to me to do it with other things. Um, all right, Millions to Measure. And um, this is just fun. It's just all of these different, um, you know, just kind of, it sort of feels like um, Miss Frizzle, like the, the Magic School Bus kind of books where there's just different things happening in the picture. And uh, what I liked about this one is that they talk a little bit about the history of measurement and how, you know, at one point <clears throat> things might have been measured you know, in terms of stones, but what if one person's stones were bigger and one person's stones were smaller and you couldn't really compare the amounts of measurement? And so why it is that we needed to kind of agree about, about our units of measurement and that sort of thing. So that was a really fun one. And then the first thing that we've done to, um, this week and a little bit of last week was to talk about time. So we've basically done intro to measurement and time. So I'm going to share with you today what we've done about time, and then I'll come back later and do, um, we're getting ready to get into weight. Hey there, girl. I'm so glad you're on here. So we read, these are the three read-alouds that we did for time. Now this is, um, Brian Cleary has a whole series of books called Words Are Categorical, and it's a part of speech, you know, one about each of the parts of speech, but he also has this series called Math is Categorical. And it's all different kinds of math concepts. And so this is the one about measurement of time. A second, a minute, a week with days in it. And if you've ever read Brian Cleary, he's hilarious. And yet, really, I, I do hope to get eventually get it up on the blog. Yeah, I'm doing it today because I need to return these books to the library. So hopefully I can catch up on the blog with what I'm doing on the scope. But yes, um, so um, this one is, you know, in poem form and it goes through all different kinds of things like, you know, how many seconds are in a minute and minutes in an hour and weeks in a um, year and, you know, months in a year and all that stuff. And it's funny. And the illustrations are hilarious. And, um, yeah, all kinds of things. So, you know, just good old Brian Cleary. And um, who's the illustrator? Brian Gable. So, anyway, same, same kind of thing if you've read the Words or Categorical series from Brian Cleary. And then this one I got partly because it's poetry. And so we actually read this during poetry tea time um, while we were doing our measure, measurement unit. And this is called um, A Second is a Hiccup. The glare of the library books. <laughs> but um, it basically goes through and it talks about, um, you know, all different things. Like it talks about, you know, how long is a second? How long is an hour? And it just describes in poem form all different things that take about an hour or about a minute or about a second or about a day, um, how much, how long is a year. So it's cute. It's just a cute little poem book. And, you know, Brian Cleary is poetry too, of course, so you could read that during your poetry tea time if you wanted to. And then this is another one. We did not read this cover to cover because it's actually quite lengthy. When I, when I flipped through it, I thought, you know, it looks kind of light on the words. It looks like, oh, this is a cute little picture book. We can read through it. But it's got so much detail in there. Um, that it's really too much to read. So it's called um, Just a Second. It's a really nifty book. So every pair, every couple of pages, um, 
tells you a bunch of interesting facts about an amount of time. So for example, the first page says in one second, and then it has all of these pictures and it tells you things in nature that happen in one second. So for example, in one second, a hummingbird flaps its wing or beats its wings 50 times, right? But a bumblebee beats its wings 200 times in a second. And a midge, a kind of gnat, beats its wings 1,000 times in a second. So it's just all these really fun nature tidbits. So what I ended up doing, because it was taking a lot longer to read than I thought, I just read this opening description on each page of what a second is. And one of the things that I loved about this book is that it talks about which measures of time are inherent in nature and which ones are man-made. So for example, a day is an, is an inherent measure of time that's in nature. Like we're basing it on how long it takes the earth to rotate once or you know, if you think about it from our perspective, like for the sun to go, you know, up, down, and back to where it got, uh, back to where it started. So, you know, some measures of time are based on things that we find in nature, and some measures of time we've created for the purpose of describing things. So that was an interesting discussion, too, to have. Like, where did this measure of time come from? Did we make it up, or is it based on something in nature? Which led, then, to a discussion about, like, couldn't we change it? Couldn't we, like, let the sun go around three times and then call that a day and what you know why would it matter if we did it differently so anyway that was fun and then we had a few activities we did about time and I am so not a Pinterest mom I mean I did use Pinterest to find these activities some of them but um I'm just not like I am not going to be going out and buying a shopping cart full of weird supplies that I wouldn't have for anything else um, so a lot of activities I'd say like, that looks cool, totally not me. So the activities that I ended up doing with the kids were ones that I could do super simple with pretty much things that I already had on hand. Um, so one thing we did, which I don't have a, I don't have, I can't show you because it's not existent anymore, but I have a picture of it on my Instagram account, was we did kind of like a um, sundial. So I just took a big cardboard box and flattened it and put a piece of white paper on it, cut a hole in the middle and stabbed a pencil right down through the center. So... The cardboard box was basically just for a hard surface, and then the white paper was to draw on. And then we went out once an hour, and I let them use a different color marker to trace over the shadow of the pencil. So they saw it not only rotate around the pencil, but get longer and shorter, and they wrote the time on there. And, you know, so that was just kind of an interesting observation about how the shadows change over time and how somebody might have used a sundial to tell time. And at one point when we went out, it was perfect because a cloud was covering the sun. So we got to have this discussion about how like the limitations of a sundial, because if it's cloudy or if it's raining or if it's nighttime, you can't do it. Right. So for that, we used a cardboard box, a piece of paper, a pencil and some markers. And then the other project that we made were, um, we made some clocks on, um, paper plates. So, you know, I just bought the paper plates at the grocery store and my husband actually had to stop by a office supply store for the Brads because apparently, I guess it's just not common anymore. You can't find them like in the grocery store or CVS or anything. So, um, you know, we have two hands on the clock, but what was cool about this idea, um, I, you know, I found this one on Pinterest, but two of the things that were cool about it were, first of all, we started by, I don't know if you can tell on Periscope, but we started by folding the paper plate. So there are, um, you know, creases to divide it in half this way and in half this way which first of all was helpful for numbering, but also it enabled us to talk about, you know, um, half past the hour or a quarter past the hour or a quarter until the next hour. And then the other thing that I loved about the paper plate is it just happened to have 72 little, um, I don't know what you call these, like divots in the edge of the paper plate. So if we counted by sixes, then we could cut them into um, 12 sections for the clock and then this is what we did so we have a paper plate on top that's cut and then we have another paper plate underneath where we put the minutes so they can yeah it's not my idea I totally got it off Pinterest but it was really cool especially for the little one or you know she's six but telling time is new to her so you can you know look underneath the three and it's gonna be 15 minutes and you look underneath the four and it's gonna be 20 minutes so anyway that was kind of a fun activity, and it gave them a reminder about, um, you know, the older ones, a reminder about the correlation between the hours and the minutes. And then I got some manipulatives from Rainbow Resource because the older ones 
need to know not just how to tell time, but how to do um, calculations about elapsed time. So, you know, so-and-so goes to swim practice at 2.40, and um, they're, they're there for an hour and 15 minutes, and what time are they done with swim practice? So here are two manipulatives that I got from Rainbow Resource that were fun. This one, <laughs> I just stuck it on my um, cookie sheet so you could see. So it comes with two clocks. I don't think I can get it all in the shot at once, but it comes with two clocks, so you can use the hands on the clocks to set the start and the stop time of whatever, you know, thing you're trying to show. And then it's also got um, these two long pieces here that represent the 12 hours of a day. Let me see if I can pull those off. So there's one that goes from 12 a.m. all the way to, you know, 11, and then the other one goes from 12 p.m., all the way to 11. So if you stick them together, you know, they can really get a timeline kind of visual of how there's 24 hours in a day. And when you finish the first 12 hours, then you're going into the second 12 hours. And they're divided just like a ruler would be. They're divided into, um, you know, quarters. So you have 415, 430, 445. So we could, um, it's magnetic, you know, you could put it up on a whiteboard. And you could use a whiteboard marker to show, you know, we have to jump one, two, three hours, and then 15 minutes. Um, and then this is the same idea, but it's just a, um, you know, these were super cheap. I think maybe like a dollar or two a piece. So I ended up getting two just because I figured, you know, chances are good. A couple of people might need them at the same time. And it's the same idea. It starts at 12, you know, midnight, 12 uh, a.m. And it, they're divided into quarter hours and then a little bit smaller sections in between. The first section is red, then you get to 12 noon, and then again, and then, this is what I thought was really cool, there's a little um, slice at the end and at the beginning, and so you can actually wrap it around, you know, so like if you wanted to calculate that you went to bed at 8 o'clock at night, and you slept, you know, through midnight and on until 6 in the morning, you know, how many hours of sleep did you get, so you can actually do time calculations, you know, even if it goes from the end of one day to the beginning of the next day. And I just thought also it's kind of a cool visual to be reminded that, um, you know, 12 midnight is like the end of one night and the beginning of the next day. Yeah, it was really, and they really enjoyed these, and they've been just kind of playing with them and messing around, um, experimenting with that a little bit. So the combination of this one and then the magnetic one, which I've been kind of using as my teacher tool. So Anyway, those are some of the fun resources that we've used for talking about time. And like I said, um, you know, while we're doing that in our group time, then independently they're doing different things on Khan Academy. Um, and I assign the Khan Academy things through a blog, like a blog post that's just for them to look at and do their schoolwork. So that's another scope that I have back in my Periscope account somewhere if you want to see about how I use a blog to do my um, assignments for them. Anyway, so I hope eventually to get up on my blog the, um, the links to materials and, and uh, information here. And right now, we're getting ready to work on weights and measures. So I will be back with some of the fun stuff that we found to work on that. And if you're following me on Instagram, you might have seen one of them today. So thanks, guys, for joining me. And I will catch you around later on.